Hello! In this lesson, we will learn how to set up and operate the Burr Oak Tube Bender. The Burr Oak Tube Bender is a large manufacturing machine that pulls and straightens a certain length of metal copper tubing, then bends it into a hairpin shape to be used later in the production of heating cores, evaporators, and condensers. Let's break down this process to get to know the machine better. For the purpose of this video, we will assume the machine has no copper tubing installed. If you already have copper tubing in the machine, refer to the lesson on replacing empty coils for removing the tubes from the machine, and then continue with this lesson. This machine is a vertical bend hairpin bender equipped with an eye in the sky uncoiler. The copper coils are brought in on pallets and placed on both sides of the straightening station. The machine can be used with any number of tubes, but Red Dot has equipped this machine to operate with a maximum 7 tubes, so there will be 3 coils on one side and 4 on the other. The coils are laid out so the number 1 tube closest to you as it goes across the straightening station and into the machine is in the far left position if you are looking at the uncoiler from the tube bender. The tubes count up counterclockwise in sequence from 1 to 7, with 3 and 4 opposite each other. The tubes are then uncoiled through the entry guide tube above each coil and ran along a table until reaching the PVC guide tubes and the out of tube sensor. Afterwards, a tube guide block retains the tubes before they reach the sizing and straightening rolls where the tubes are sized along individual rollers. This machine has a cross axis sizer installed, which will shape the tubes at 45 degree angles from vertical, rounding the tubes before passing them through straighteners until they reach the feed belts. The feed belts pull the tubes into the machine from the switch tower to the bender side where each tube passes through another tube guide block before reaching its own oiled mandrels along the stripper rods. These mandrels make sure the tubes will not become misshapen when bending. The tubes are clamped on one end, cut on the other, then bent by the bender carriage on the clamp side. Once the tubes have been bent, they are stripped back off the stripper rods and dropped below to be checked for quality before being prepared to be sent to the next area. Don't forget, your safety is of utmost importance when operating the tube bender, so remember to keep all body parts out of the machine when it is on, and wear the proper hearing and eye protection when in the area. Now that we know more about the machine, let's set up the tube bender for processing parts. Begin each setup by filling the mandrel oil pump reservoir with oil. This must be done daily to ensure the pump will not be damaged when running. Red Dot uses Oak 5020 oil for this pump. The oil is located near the uncoiler in large barrels. Using a hand pump, pump the oil into the designated secondary buckets kept near the machine. To fill the oil, first close the valve on the pump before removing the reservoir cap. Place a funnel into the fill hole and add oil until it is filled completely, but be careful not to overfill. When the oil is filled, remove the funnel, replace and tighten the reservoir cap, then reopen the oil valve on top by loosening the valve. Now do the same with the other oil reservoir located near the remote air feed panel. This oil lubricates the tube outside diameter as well as the machine's cutters and bearings. Red Dot uses Oak 11B oil for this purpose. This oil can be found in the same location as the Oak 5020 oil. Once both oils are filled, walk back around the hydraulic pump at the end of the machine to check the hydraulic pressure. Verify the pressure compensator on the pump is set to 1100 psi and check for any hydraulic leaks coming from the lines. You will have to wait to do this until after you have powered the machine on and started the pump. As a general rule, keep an eye out for any leaks coming from any of the machine's various fluid lines and clean any small oil spills as they occur. When dealing with a large spill, try to contain it, and then notify maintenance of the spill to get it cleaned and disposed of properly. Back near the hydraulic pump, turn the power to the external machine cooler on using the switch. The temperature should read around 65 degrees, plus or minus a few degrees. Next, switch the main power handle to the on position. At the main control panel, you'll see the many actions that can be performed by the machine. Start by pressing the green master start button and then the pump start button to fully energize the machine. The blue manual button will automatically engage and with this set you will be able to perform specific functions while setting up the machine. Make sure the air feed knob is switched to the 7 position in order to run the 7 tubes per cycle this particular machine is equipped for. 
You can run six tubes if needed by switching the air feed knob to the sixth position, then turning the remote air feed for tube seven off on the remote control panel. Once the pump has been energized, walk down to the smaller control panel labeled remote air feed and turn that knob to the on position. Check the air feed for each belt individually. The air feed for tube one should be closest to the operator, the number two feed should be the one next to that, and so on until tube seven on the far side of the machine. Turn all of the air feeds on, then walk back to the main control panel. Press each button on the control panel to familiarize yourself with what it does, and to test whether that particular function is working properly. If any are acting incorrectly, notify maintenance to check the wiring and fix the issue. When checking the free cut function, verify the cutter and bearing oilers are set and working. This will oil the outside of the tubes as they pass along to the bender side of the Hold the mandrels in button to check the flow of oil for the inside diameter of the tubes. This oil is pushed by air over the mandrels in order to reduce the drag between the tube walls and the mandrels, so the tubes do not tear during the pending process. Adjust this as necessary using the valve near the end of the machine, above the hydraulic pump, tightening to close the valve for less oil, and loosening the valve for more oil. Verify the pressure for the cutters is about 800 PSI by checking the gauges on the side of the machine. Maintenance can adjust the PSI between 300 to 800 in order to obtain the proper cut for the material you are using. Other specific pressures for the machine are found in the operator maintenance manual. Switch the remote air feed to off and walk toward the copper coils set on each side of the machine. Every day you will have to wax the inside of the belts using a stick wax provided by your supervisor or the maintenance department. This helps the belt slide over the pressure pads holding the tubes to prevent wear and friction. Remove old or excessive wax with a cloth and then apply the fresh wax. Be sure not to wax the outside of the belts or this will affect how the tubes pass through them. The overhead spiral uncoiler system used on this tube bender uncoils the copper which is brought in on a pallet and stocked on both sides. Start the coil from the center and feed the end up into the entry guide tube above each. Feed through until you can grab the tubes from the end of the table below the entry guides. Push or walk the tube to the machine end of the table. Trim the end of the tube if needed using a manual cutter as the ends must be able to fit over the mandrel tip. Feed the tubes through the guides and straightening station until they are at least halfway through the feed belts. Each tube must pass through its own straighteners and rollers, with number one being closest to you and number seven the furthest. Be aware that you may have to pull some of the inner wraps of the coil to prevent them from kinking, especially as you reach the bottom of the coil. Sometimes the material arrives damaged, so inspect the tubing while operating as the machine will not function properly when operating with severely damaged material. The straighteners installed on the machine can only round the outside of the tube. They cannot fix any indentations on the tubing, so remember to watch for this as you continue operation. Next, we will continue loading the tube. Walk to the remote air feed control panel and turn it on using the remote air feed knob. Turn on the proper number of tubes using the appropriate knobs. This machine is set to produce seven tubes per cycle, so turn all seven knobs to the on position. By repeatedly pressing the feed button, inch the tubes through the telescoping guide tubes into the cutoff station. When the ends of all the tubes are exposed, trim the ends by pushing free cut. Be careful not to use the cutoff button unless all tubes are through the feed belts and secured by the bender clamp. This is because the cutoff button engages the system backup and retracts the tubes during cutting. So if the tubes are not properly set or clamped, damage or breakage to the cutter can occur. This tube bender uses an automated system to adjust the lengths of each side of the hairpin tubes to be bent. The lengths are displayed on the two electronic counters at the bottom of the main control panel. You can adjust the lengths of either the switch tower or bender side using these switches. There is also a switch to change from slow to fast adjustments depending on how much length change is needed. Start by turning the length adjust switch to the on position. To determine the hairpin length for this tube bender, Red Dot's engineers take the header to header length from the core and apply the formula shown here. The times 1.042 is for taking shrinkage into account during the bending and expansion. The 1.25 represents 0.75 inches below the bottom header, 
plus 0.5 inches of pre-expanded tube above the top header. For standard 1 inch bends, use the length of tube that comes on the work order. For 80 radius bends, you must add 1 tenth of an inch to the length of the free leg on the left and then subtract 1 quarter inch from the clamp leg on the right. Refer to Engineering Operating Procedure 4-003.1 for more information on Red Dot's design guidelines for tubing. You can also use the counter to preset the length of the tubes. To do this, press the program button, then press Preset 1. Input the value for the length of the tube. Press the Enter button and the machine will adjust to the correct length for the hairpin. When you have set both sides of the machine to the proper length, remember to turn the length adjust switch back off. The height alignment of the straightener can be adjusted using the two buttons for raising or lowering it, found on the side of the machine, next to the hairpin tube catch pan. You can make this alignment easier by reducing the length of the hairpin leg on the left switch tower side. This will extend the carriage of the cutoff so you are able to inch the tubes back and forth with the feed and feed backup buttons to see how they line up with the guides. With the shorter length set, it is easier to properly align the tubes to the guides. Then reset the leg length to the proper number. Always push the bend return button before feeding the tubes to assure the bend head returns fully as sometimes it relaxes up off the positive stops. As the tubes approach the bend tower, a slowdown switch is actuated, causing the tubes to feed at a slower rate. As each tube pushes the stripper tube against the actuator sleeve, a switch releases the air pressure to be released for the corresponding pressure pad. The actuator sleeve will slip over the tube until all the tubes have tripped their switches, then the feed will stop. Push and hold the clamp push button, then do the same with the mandrel's in button. Continue holding these two while you push the cutoff button. This action will stop when the tubes have been cut and retracted past the backup switches. With the clamp and mandrel's in buttons pressed, push and hold the bend button. Continue holding the three buttons from the previous step until the bend is complete. In the following order, first release the bend button, second the mandrel's in button, and third the clamp button. Press the strip button to push the hairpins off the stripper tubes and into the catch pan. Push carriage retract to return the cutter's carriage to the original position. Then strip return for the stripper tubes. And finally bend return for the bend head. This finishes the machine cycle. Even when your tube lengths are set correctly, as an operator you are responsible for the quality of the parts you are producing. Be sure to scrap any tubes you don't think meet quality standards. Remember, Red Dot would rather have to scrap some copper now than have a bad product returned from a customer later. Place any bad parts in a bin and periodically empty that bin into the larger scrap containers kept near the machine. Notify someone from receiving when you need to have the copper scrap emptied and they will take care of its disposal. To maintain a certain quality standard for the tubes, Red Dot has designed a measurement tool for you to spot check the leg lengths of the tubes as they come from the machine. For the first few cycles of a run, or when continuing work after a break, you will want to be checking every tube until you are sure the tubes are satisfactory. In order to measure the tubes, place the bottom bracket in the marked hole length that is closest to the length of tube you are bending. Take the sample tube to be checked and place it flat along the measurement tool. Letting the top of the caliper rest on the tubes, verify the reading totals no more than 30 thousandths of an inch. If the part is within this tolerance and the tube looks good with little to no dimples or ridges, then move on to start the automated cycle. However, if the part has ridges on the bend, is discolored or damaged at all, or the tube headers are not even, you will have to adjust the machine to fix these issues. The leg on the right that is clamped and held by the bend head is called the bender or clamp leg, and the one to the left is called the switch tower or free leg. We're going to go over how to adjust the leg lengths of all the tubes, and later we'll talk about how to adjust individual tubes if they are bent incorrectly. If the free legs are the wrong length, the switch tower must be moved to compensate using the length adjust. If the legs are too long, you must decrease the leg length and move the switch tower forward using the automatic length adjusters. If the free legs are too short, increase the leg length and move the switch tower back. Run another cycle of tubes and check them again. If the clamp legs are the wrong length, the bender side length must be adjusted. 
If the legs are too long, you must reduce the tube length and move the bender forward toward the straightener. If the legs are too short, you must increase the tube length and move the bender back away from the straightener. Run another cycle of tubes and check them again. Repeat this process until the legs are within tolerance. Sometimes you will notice that individual tubes are out of tolerance, while others are good. This is most likely due to the placement of the mandrels inside the tubes. To fix this, you must adjust the position of the mandrels inside that tube's bend. Find out which tube is being bent incorrectly. You can run another cycle manually if you are unsure which tube it is. Using a wrench, adjust the rods on the end of the machine in order to move the mandrel for that tube. If the free leg is short, move the mandrel forward into the bend by loosening the nut with the wrench. If the clamp leg is short, you must tighten the nut to move the mandrel back out from the bend. Bending the tubes can also form ridges along the inside of the bend. It is very difficult to create a ridge-free tube, but in order to adjust the bend so they will not be so prominent, slightly loosen or adjust the set screws on the float block and manually cycle the machine to check the tubes again. Repeat this process until the tubes are satisfactory. Depending on the material you are using, the ridges will be more prominent or not. If the tube length is within tolerance, the two tube headers are even, and there are no deformities in the hairpin, then place the good parts in the colored bins to move on to the next step in the process. Before we are ready to have the machine operate automatically, we must set the automatic counter. This will keep track of the number of parts and stop the machine when the number has been reached. Since we are running seven tubes per cycle, you will sometimes have extra tubes sent with the order. This is okay. In order to set the counter, start by pressing the program button, followed by the preset one button. Then set the count number using the numbered buttons and enter it using the enter button. Use the reset button to reset the count, then press the counter button to engage the counter. With the tube lengths and counter set, make sure you have all the safety guards in the proper position. There is a list of initial conditions in the lesson on Baroque modes. If these conditions are not met, the machine will not operate automatically, so refer to that lesson for a complete list of what to check. When you are ready, press the automatic button and then the cycle start button. In the case of any malfunction or emergency, push the emergency stop button to immediately stop the machine. If you need to stop the machine cycle for adjustments or stop only the hydraulic pump, then press the cycle stop or pump stop buttons. Once you are finished working for the day, press the cycle stop button and the pump stop button and then go turn off the main power switch as well as the power to the external cooler. Before we're done, let's go over some evaluation criteria for the Burr Oak Tube Bender machine setup. The operator correctly identifies and checks the machine before setup or operation. Know how to fill the pump and bearing oilers daily and check all fluid lines for leaks. Know how to check the pressures on pressure gauges. The operator is able to properly set up the machine. Know how to power the machine and check all action on the control panel buttons. The operator recognizes and can set up the eye in the sky uncoiler. Know what the uncoiler is and what it does. Know how material is loaded into the uncoiler. The operator can load the tube into the machine. Know how to load the tube into the feed belts and through the machine. The operator can set up and check the correct hairpin length. Know how to find the proper leg length for an order and know how to use the automated leg length adjust. The operator correctly explains how to identify that quality tubes are being produced. Know how to look for deformities in the material before it reaches the bender and check the tubes for quality after they have been bent. That's all you need to know to set up and begin operation of the Burr Oak Tube Bender. If you have any questions, be sure to ask your supervisor or coworkers for guidance, and thank you for your contribution toward making Red Dot a better company.